Hi, I'm Dr. Dan, founder of the Medical Mastermind Community, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes to explain what the average MCAT scores were for the entering class of 2010. Okay, so taken together, everyone that started an allopathic medical school in 2010, that is a school that gets the MD degree, okay, their average MCAT score was 31.1 with a standard deviation of 4.1. Now, if you haven't had statistics yet, you may not be sure what the standard deviation part is, but you need to understand the basic concept of the bell curve to get a very encouraging point, okay? If you are struggling to get that 31, like I was, I never got near that, really. I think 27 was the highest I ever got, and I still got in, okay? What that means is that almost 16% of everybody that took the MCAT and got into medical school in 2010 scored only a 27 on the MCAT or less. Now that part of the bell curve, 27 or less, accounts for almost 16% of the entire entering class. So if you got 26, 27, 25, 24, you're falling off. Now clearly you've got some work to do and a lot of people are beating you. And I want to take a minute to say that if you're having trouble in undergrad or on the MCAT, you really need to take a hard look at what the reasons for that is because that's part of your responsibility, it's part of your professional development. There are no shortcuts. I do not recommend that you just run off to a medical school outside the U.S. or something that doesn't require an MCAT or doesn't care that you only got a 14 without taking a hard look, okay? Because the statistics for U.S. nationals go into schools outside the United States trying to get a residency, a job, and come back in. I mean, great, you got a doctor behind your name, but you can't get a job. It's awful. I get calls and emails like this every week, and it's heartbreaking. The chance of you getting a job back in the U.S. is only 47%. It's less than half. As opposed to the statistics I'm giving you, their rate of residency match upon graduation is 93 or 94%. Okay, if you can't get a decent MCAT score, you need to take a hard look at why that is. Okay? Now, the average MCAT score for verbal reasoning in 2010 was 9.9. .9. The biological sciences section was 10.8, and the physical sciences section was 10.4. Now, all those have their own mean and standard deviation. I'm just reporting the mean to you right now, but I should tell you that notice that they're all within a point or so of each other. That's important. You don't want to get a 15 in physical sciences and a 7 in biological. It needs to be spread out. So if you have a strength in one area, make sure you pay a lot of attention to the other to try to bring that up. Okay. And for the writing sample, the 25th percentile scored an N, the median was a Q, and the 75th percentile for the writing sample was an R. So you would, again, you wouldn't want an N, a real kind of a weak uh, writing sample and then to get like 12s on everything else. They would wonder what's up with that. You know, you want balanced, broad based preparation because that's what's going to set you up best to be a fulfilled physician and take great care of your patients. So, again, I'm Dr. Dan from the Medical Mastermind community and I'll actually give you a free speed reading course if you visit my website. Okay, take care and good luck on the MCAT.